Hey friends, it's Megan Morrison back with another video for you guys today. I am super excited about today's topic. It is one that everyone always has a question about, especially when you first start out, is how do you price your services for bridal hair and bridal makeup and what should you be charging? So let's get right into the video. Real quick, if you are new here to my channel, I help beauty pros beauty, bridal, makeup artists, and hairstylists grow their and scale their businesses. So if you are interested in growing your skill set for hair and makeup, as well as growing your bridal beauty business, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. All right, now let's get into the video. So as a newer makeup artist or bridal hairstylist, the first question you always ask yourself is, what should I be charging? and it there's so many different variables and factors that go into how you should price your services what does your branding look like do you have beautiful pictures on your instagram page Do you have beautiful pictures on your facebook page that you're posting how often are you posting on your stories uh, reels all of that how often are you posting and how consistent are you that is part of your brand. Also, what does your website look like? Do you even have a website? Do your, what does your booking system look like? Do you have a booking system? Do you keep track of it on paper? Or do you have an easy, simple digital system that brides can easily use to book you? All of these play a factor in what you can charge your brides for their hair and makeup services. So, if you have a beautiful branded website and Instagram and Facebook and you have an easy digital booking system, you can charge a lot more for your services than someone who keeps track of bookings pen and paper and it's a lot more work for the bride. So say you gotta email the contracts to them and then they gotta scan them or whatever and then email them back to you. Um, maybe you don't have a website and all of those are okay, but they do play a factor in how much you can charge for your services. So for someone booking pen and paper, you don't have a website, you're not going to be able to charge as much as someone who has an easy booking system and who has a beautiful branded website and they're posting consistently and you can tell they put a lot of effort into it and they're constantly taking classes and educating themselves. So I personally teach to grow and scale your bridal beauty business. In order to do that, you need to have a website, a beautiful website. You need to be posting consistently on Instagram of your hair and your makeup work. You need to have an easy booking system where your brides can sign contracts digitally and it's all in one simple little thing. I personally use HoneyBook. I do have a referral code. If you guys are interested, I'll link it below. I think right now you can literally get it for like a dollar a month. It is literally everything. I love HoneyBook and I'm not sponsored or anything, but it keeps track of my contracts. It keeps everyone's individual files separately so I can see their trial pictures and it keeps everything flowing smoothly and I would literally not be able to run my business without it. So for those of you wanting to charge top dollar for your services, you have to start lining things up in your business to make you look like more luxury. So like I said, a website, a good booking system, um, beautiful branded pictures and how you can do that is collaborate with other artists in your area and start building up a beautiful portfolio of professional photos that you can use on your website that is exactly what I did when I first started and I went from charging $65 for a bridesmaid to now charging $125 per bridesmaid and I'm gonna tell you it's gonna keep going up from there because I kid you not, I spend all my time, free time, most all of it, educating myself, listening to podcasts, taking classes virtually and in person. I'm constantly 
figuring out how I can make the booking process better and easier for my brides. I'm constantly practicing on mannequins, on models, on people to get more experience, to practice uh, different techniques. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the bridal industry, that is never not an option for you. I personally, I've been doing bridal hair for 10 years, but there's always something new you can learn, something new you can try. And for me, I'm always practicing on models and mannequins because I create a lot of social media content. And by constantly having so much posted and just being consistent with posting and having all these videos to post, it keeps me at the forefront of a lot of other bridal stylists in my area because I'm constantly posting. So people are start to, when you do that, people start to recognize that, oh, she's the go-to person or, oh, she does beautiful bridal because she's always posting it. So a lot more people are seeing it if you're posting it more. So just things like that are how you can slowly start to charge more. And let me tell you, you can charge as much as you want for your services. Now, you do have to have all those other things that I was just talking about. You have to have those other things in line and they have to line up with your pricing. You can't just charge $1,000 for bridal makeup or bridal hair and not have a well functioning, well oiled system that flows smoothly because when brides pay higher prices, that means that they're getting a more luxury experience and things are more simplified for them. So you have to take all of that into account. So it's the experience you're giving them, your experience, your skill set, but also what's your cost too for running your business? What type of products do you have? Do you have higher end makeup products or do you have more drugstore products? Because if you're charging top dollar for bridal makeup, you probably should not be using a lot of drugstore brands. Yeah, maybe a few in there is okay, or maybe some of the like trending products that you see all over TikTok, that might be okay, but brides are gonna wanna see those luxury brands such as Dior, Makeup Forever, NARS, Makeup by Mario, you know, all the higher end brands, Charlotte Tilbury, they're gonna wanna see those because they're paying top dollar to maybe use those makeup products that maybe they don't normally use um, or they're just familiar with them as being luxury brands. Same with hair. You wanna make sure that you're using luxury, higher end hair products if you're wanting to charge more. So I'm gonna quit rambling a little bit. I do have a formula for you all to kind of guide you a little bit. Like I said, there's so many factors that go into pricing and you can charge whatever you want. But this formula that I'm gonna give you is gonna be the baseline and help you figure out how much you're actually spending per person that you do. So from there, you can go to say, okay, well, I wanna make this amount of money this year, or I wanna make this amount of money per month. And when you know how much you're spending on each person, you, it helps to determine what you wanna charge per person. Because if you're spending X amount of money on a person and then you're only charging maybe this much, you might not be making much profit like you think. So the formula, what you're gonna do is, this applies for bridal makeup artists as well as bridal hairstylists. What you're gonna do is you're gonna total up everything that you have in your kit. And I would keep them separately if you do bridal hair and makeup total up everything you have in your bridal makeup kit, total up everything, all the expenses that you have to run your business. So if you pay for a website like monthly, if you pay for a booking system, if you pay for car maintenance, gas, everything, total up everything, your makeup chair, all your makeup products, you wanna total up the total cost of everything that it takes to run your business. So for example, maybe it's $3,000 and you're gonna multiply that by 1% and that is going to give you the dollar amount for about what it costs you per person to do. Because 
give or take, you're using about 1% of your products per person that you do. So say you total up your total makeup kit, your everything it takes on your business is $3,000. So you're gonna take $3,000 times 0 0.01, which is 1%, equals $30. So you're using roughly about $30 per person. So for some of you, depending on what your total bridal kit cost is, some are gonna cost way more than this, some are gonna cost less than this. That was just a random number that I chose, um, but you're using about $30 of product per person. So when you know that, if you're only charging 60, $65, then you're only making about 30 bucks-ish profit, 35, give or take, per person. So when you know that, then you can easily say, well, I want to make more than $30 profit. I don't want to make just $30. So from there, you know, you're spending about $30 per person. It's costing your business $30 per person to do their makeup. So then you can determine, well, I want to charge 95. I want to charge 110. I want to charge 125. So that means, you know, if you're charging 125 per bridesmaid and you subtract 30, that means you're making about $95 off of that person. So keep that in mind when pricing. You can do the same thing with your bridal hair kit. Take total up everything it costs you, gas, everything it takes to run your business. Even if you do both, keep them separate. So then when you do that, add your booking system, website, all your hair products, hair tools, everything, and then multiply it by 1%. Now, with makeup, I will say you're gonna be using a little bit more. So with hair, um, you know, hair tools, once you have them invested, you can keep raising. Products, they usually last a little while, hair products, so you don't have to replenish them as often. Um, well, you do, you do go through hair products a lot. But I think you know what I'm saying. Makeup products are a little bit different. So you might be using maybe a little more like half percent on hair. So that is just a little formula that you guys can use to just at least figure out first how much you, you are spending on each person. And then from there, you get to determine how much you want to make. And then also too with pricing, a lot of times you have travel in there too. And sometimes people don't know what to charge for travel. I will say on average for most people, depending on where you live, it could be a little bit less, it could be a little bit more, but the kind of average is about a dollar per mile. But the way I do mine is I charge a travel slash retainer fee and I kind of lump them together. And that is the fee that my brides pay at the time of booking to reserve their date. So they sign a contract and then back along with the contract, they give me their travel slash retainer fee and that reserves their date. And then their total payment is due at least one week before the wedding. But I charge a little bit of a higher travel fee because I also consider it a retainer fee, which also covers all my costs and my time of having conversations with the bride within that whole year you know they randomly message you sometimes and they're like hey what do you think about these pictures wanted to send you these makeup pictures wanted to send these hair pictures or they have questions about other things and how the day runs and so that is my time too and that needs to be charged for so that's kind of how i do that so i charge retainer slash travel fee and it covers all that time that i spend with that bride during that year of you know, having conversations with her, answering any questions to her, because essentially she's getting full access to me for a whole entire year. And I'm here and I'm happy to answer questions she has, make her feel comfortable. And so that is why I charge that. And then of course I charge a separate trial fee for their trial. And then of course their wedding day here. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And I will see you in the next one. Also, if you have any video suggestions of anything you'd like to see next or learn next, let me know in the comments.